celebrate the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us for our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Remember that my life is like the wind. 
I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible. To the weak, I became weak to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I, too, may have a share the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons 
not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him and on finding him said, everyone is looking for you. He told them, let's go on to nearby villages that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So we went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. This weekend on this fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time, our scripture readings all revolve around the presence of God how we interact with him in our own lives. Each is a little different, but it's all about our relationship with God. It's all about how we understand and view God. And our first reading for Job is having a difficult time. Remember the story of Job. He had everything. He was a good man. He was righteous with God and on good terms with God. And God had blessed him and multiplied his children, his wealth, his family, possessions and his belongings. He gave glory to God all of the time. And then things kind of went to the other way. He lost everything. His wife and family were overcome and died. All his possessions, he was relegated to almost nothingness. Even he himself suffered personally. And so he's lamenting. But he never cursed God, nor did he ever abandon his faith. He still gave praise and glory to God. I came into this world with nothing, and I go out with nothing. Only me, only my soul. How many of us would have the courage and the confidence in Almighty God to be able to say that? Job was disappointed sort of in his friends as well. How many people reached out to help him? They're all part of the same community. The whole idea of our community and our faith is that we are called to be servants to one another. When one is in need, clearly we should be helping each other out. They all taunted Job a little bit and said, where is your God now? What's happening? And so he laments his life and the reality of the people around him who are very little in support. St. Paul, who is our patron saint in our parish community, He was a zealot against Christianity at first, as we know, ultimately becoming the prophet to the Gentiles, the apostle to the Gentiles. Very prolific in his ministry, he too realizes that he has been given a great task and that he is humbled by that task and empties himself out for all of us. Wherever he is, he becomes one in the neighborhood. He feels the pain and the presence what's going on wherever he goes. He tries to put forth his best effort always, knowing that 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 is exactly what he's been called to do. The gospel is his gift, given to him by Jesus Christ, now freely given to all of us. And he is willingly proclaiming and encourages all of us to do the same thing. It's a free gift. Faith belongs to us. We're all saved because Jesus Christ suffered and died for us. But it's like any gift. It is meant to be used. It's a free gift, but it takes work to keep. It takes work to get to the finish line, as St. Paul would also say. It is not without some effort. It is not without some responsibility and accountability. That's what St. Paul is talking about today. I have been entrusted with this, and I willingly do it, because I know my recompense. My reward will be great in heaven. Now that always sounds trite, even sometimes I wonder, you know, I say it a lot. Do I really mean it? Do I really understand it? Am I willing, in spite of the difficulties that may befall me personally and the world around me, to still believe that Jesus is out there and is going to help me? Well, why doesn't he eradicate the coronavirus? Why doesn't he help people get well? Why doesn't he overcome all the illness in the hospitals? Well, he is, through us. Jesus Christ, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit made us. They dwell and live in us forever. 
The gospel is part of our lives. It calls us to this journey of faith, through the good and the bad, to recognize that there are ups and downs in all of life. Reality is life. There are good things that happen to people. There are bad things that happen. The explanation is they happen because that's the way it is. Why do auto accidents happen? Because somebody's careless. Why does somebody get sick and die? Something in their life was not receptive to what's going on in our world today. It's the course of nature. It's the course of who and what we are. We're born to die so that we might get to the reality of our eternal salvation, which is the promised gift of Jesus Christ. Today in our gospel, Jesus is doing what he is supposed to do, preach in the synagogues. He goes to his apostle, Simon and Andrew's house, with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law is ill. He cures her because he can. And that's what he desires to do. These are people of faith. They believe that Jesus can help them. Ultimately, people come. News spreads fast. People talk. And so he's inundated with people. He needs time for himself as well. Often in our scriptures, we know that he goes off by himself to pray. Evil spirits he does not permit to speak. They know who he is. The devil recognizes good. The devil recognizes God. He doesn't have faith in God, but he certainly recognizes who he is. And God, of course, Jesus has power over everything, most especially over evil. He chastises them, sends them away, and continues to offer healing and salvation to all, preaching the message of the gospel. Ultimately, they go, he kind of prays by himself. Then he says, let us go to the nearby villages, for that is the purpose and the reason I have come, to proclaim the gospel. When Jesus suffered and died for us, and then ultimately ascends to his Father in heaven, he commissioned the apostles to go out and do the same thing. In turn, the apostles continue to pass on this gospel message. They prolifically went throughout their world that they knew and proclaimed who Jesus was. Well, we're the bearers of those messages. We have become the apostles and the disciples of our world today. It's up to us to do the same thing, to go out and proclaim the good news in Jesus Christ, recognizing that even in the midst of this good news of Jesus, there's bad news in real life. But we're anticipating the goodness of God always in our life. Like Job, may we praise the Lord always for everything, the good and the bad, knowing that we'll handle it the best way we can and persevere and ultimately gain eternal salvation. This weekend in every parish of the diocese, we begin our Returning God's Gifts campaign, RGG as it is commonly known. It's been around for, oh, years now, probably 15. It is an additional way in helping our diocese provide for the needs of parishes, seminarians, priests, deacons, the training of religious education, Catholic schools, Catholic charities, the many, many opportunities that we have to continue to participate in our world today, in our diocese. It's a necessary part of who and what we are. You know, often asked questions are, well, why do we need extra things? Well, they're not really extra. We have to provide for these things. I suppose we could put them in our budget and the diocese could tax every parish the whole total of the $2.5 million split amongst 41 parishes and missions that would drastically change our economy here in our local parish. This is additional things that help support the chancery office, seminarians, as I said, priests, studies, other pursuits in our diocese, other ministries. They are necessary, they're part of everything. But what this does is allows us to be good stewards of our gifts. We still need to remember our parish community. By the way, I thank all of you because our community has done a great job keeping up, especially during coronavirus, with your health financially, spiritually, and physically. I appreciate that. But this gives us that an additional opportunity to be, even as St. Paul says, good stewards of our gifts. All is a gift from God. So we are called upon not only to help with our own parish community, but help with the broader church, starting with our own diocese. There are many second collections during the course of the year that even bring us farther to help support the broader world uh, 
face of the world, by our contributions to other charities throughout our world. It's all about stewardship. The more we understand what stewardship is all about, the more uh, and the better off we'll all be. Stewardship is not just money, it's time, talent, and treasure. It's a combination of all three. Again, referring to St. Paul, he spread the gospel, it's free. He also worked tirelessly to provide for himself, for the communities that he was with. People gave him support, physically and financially. And so essentially that's what we do in our world today in a variety of ways. This is just another opportunity for all of us to be more faith-filled, to be more generous because we can, and to really fulfill our obligation as good stewards to our world, to our church, and to one another. It's about us. Everything we do, everything we are, should be about us. We are servants to one another. That's the message of the gospel. That's the hope that we should all have in our hearts. That even in spite of difficulties, our hope is in that Jesus Christ will provide the necessary support through us. God doesn't have to come down and hold your hand. We do. That's what a community of faith is all about. Jesus took the hand of the mother-in-law, Simon and Andrew. He expected his disciples to do the same thing, just as he expects us to do the same thing on our journeys of life. So if we work together, we are in unity of purpose, and we continue to do the right things, we will be okay. Not necessarily getting everything we need in this world, but certainly moving ourselves forward in a positive way to the next. So we're here to sustain and support one another, however we can. I ask you to be generous to returning God's gifts. Most of you have probably already, if you've contributed before, have received a letter. This weekend we'll be showing a video. Obviously we're taping this mass for people at home. We'll try to put that video, we will put that video um, either um, sometime on our on website as well, so that you may all be able to watch it. It's about six minutes. Please look at it. Please be good stewards of your gifts. And as I said, uh, I appreciate it personally. We appreciate it as a parish. And I know the bishop and the diocese appreciate it as well. Um, I was a seminarian once. Returning God's gifts helped me through my journey through the seminary. It's helped me along the journey of my priesthood. It contributes to our school. It contributes to other ministries that we have in our own parish. So it's a great opportunity, as I said, to continue to fulfill our needs as good and faithful stewards. May God continue to bless us all on this journey of faith. church will preach and teach with authority, winning many to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That our elected officials will cooperate and communicate to ensure appropriate government assistance for COVID relief as it is distributed efficiently. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For women who are victims of violence, that they may be protected by 
our society and have their sufferings acknowledged and addressed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For St. Paul parishioners that we grow in love and devotion for Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For our military first responders and medical professionals that they feel the presence of Christ during times of challenging operations and family separation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. On the World Day of the Sick this week, that those who are sick, especially the chronically ill, may know healing, friendship, and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our faithful departed, especially Tom Del Seso, Byron Omang, and Joe Mitchell, that they be taken into the arms of Christ's peace and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those on our prayer list and for the prayers deep within the silence of our hearts. To the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we implore you to help us avoid the demons of our day and to celebrate the mystery of your resurrection. Through confident prayer, we will wash away fear and anxiety. We ask these things through Jesus Christ our Lord. sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good to all of his future church. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being, while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal Mystery. And so with all of the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim you.
you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Paul, St. Patrick, St. Jude, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for our unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, and Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord,
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. O oh God, you have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice. Grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. My thanks to all of you for your participation, for your prayers, your kindness, and your generosity. Please remember the Returning God's Gifts campaign. If you have questions or you need something, please let us know. We're here to be servants to each other and good stewards of our gifts. May God bless you on this journey of life. Our closing hymn, have a great week too. Our closing hymn is Lead Me, Lord. <laughs>